Hello and welcome back to Switch and Lever and the final video of the 3D printer build. In this video we'll go through test printing and some tips for troubleshooting and calibrating the printer. There's still a lot to be discovered but this video is at least a step in the right direction. The first print was done with ABS which is most commonly made from either natural gas or petroleum and is therefore not the most environmentally friendly of plastics. It is however a very tough plastic and it's used in a wide variety of applications, not in the least Legos. For the very first print, loaded up the ABS, heated it up to the recommended settings and started printing. From the beginning it looked great, the ABS extruded seemingly as it should, but after a while an apparent problem revealed itself. As the bottom layer cooled it shrank and as subsequent hot layers built up and shrank on top of it, the corners started bending and peeling to the point where they completely popped off the build plate. Doing research I thought I had done everything I could to mitigate this. I had put a mirror on the heated bed to provide an entirely flat surface. The bed height was calibrated perfectly and the mirror was covered in blue masking tape which should help with adhesion. Yet it peeled off to the point of being easily knocked loose by the nozzle. This was an obvious fail. But while printing the second iteration, it seemed like the adhesion was fixed with a little increase of the temperature of the heated bed, something which due to an underpowered power supply took close to half an hour to reach. Upon closer inspection, another error had creeped in though. A few layers up, the whole print had done a sidestep of over a millimeter, effectively rendering the print useless. For the third print, I decided to scrap the idea of the tape, as the adhesion wasn't working properly. Instead I went with a concoction commonly known as ABS juice, which is essentially just some ABS plastic dissolved in acetone. Supposedly, smearing this onto the glass of the heated bed will aid greatly in the adhesion of the first layer. In my case, it did not. It also still had a step, which I could not figure out where it came from. Applying a thicker layer of ABS juice didn't help either. The step even seemed to inexplicably be getting worse. Neither did making the ABS juice more concentrated with ABS. Finally, smearing the ABS juice on the painter's tape seemed to have made a difference. Still, the abysmal quality of the print of the ABS really made me have second thoughts about buying and spending time assembling the printer. The printer stood around for a couple of days until I decided to switch plastics to see what difference it makes. The reason I started out with ABS was that I wanted durable parts though now I was at a point where just getting any working part would be a success in itself. The other plastic that the K8200 can print is PLA. PLA, as opposed to ABS, is a bioplastic, meaning it's made from biodegradable materials. PLA can be made from several different sources, such as cornstarch or sugarcane. While I wouldn't recommend it, PLA should theoretically be safe to eat. However, it's also a fairly brittle plastic, at least in comparison with ABS, which makes it less than ideal for mechanical parts. It's also more heat sensitive and parts can warp just from being placed in a car on a hot day. Either way, PLA was the only option and literally the first print showed a lot of promise. It printed with a lower temperature on both the hot end and the heated bed, which also meant dramatically less time spent heating them before starting to print. Eventually, towards the end, the print wasn't the most beautiful one, but it was a usable piece and with a little bit of cleanup with an X-Acto knife ended up being mounted to the printer to act as an on-off switch for the controller board. Once the first print was done, we can start doing more fun stuff. This octopus was downloaded from Thingiverse and modified with a 3D scan of my own head. A few other prints were done before this as well, to further calibrate and figure out what to do. The prints are starting to look more and more impressive with each one, while getting to know the printer better and better. Going back to the painter's tape helped a lot with adhesion of the PLA as well. However, one of the biggest changes to increase the quality was to change the software used to slice up the models and generate the G-code which controls the printer. The printer ships with a software called Slicer, and it does a decent enough job, though reading on forums led me to Cura, the software used for the Ultimaker 3D printer. Using that to generate the G-code improved the quality quite a lot, which I assume is due to having settings for better fine-tuning than Slicer, as well as just having a better logic when constructing the movements of the printer. The earlier problems of the random sidestepping of the print was still an issue, and still only showed up randomly. On a hunch, because the printer was shaking a lot during prints, I decided to grease up the rods for the linear bearings. 
It really made a world of difference, and I haven't had a single print skipping since then. What probably was going on was that the linear bearings did not run smoothly enough for the stepper motors to have enough force to move them sometimes, which in turn made the motors skip a step. Since the printer software knows nothing of this, it just prints wherever it thinks it should be, not where it actually is. Another small upgrade was putting heat sinks on the stepper drivers, as they are prone to overheating and burning out during longer prints. Prints were starting to come off the printer successfully one by one, and in a random turn of events I even ended up printing a gift for the King of Sweden during a recent visit to our school. What fits better than a small addition to the crown jewels? Hey, can I call myself a royal designer now? The great news is that you can also own your own copy of the crown, albeit in digital format. The download link is in the description of this video. Even though the corner lifting was solved for smaller parts, for larger parts the corner still wanted to lift. An interesting way to improve adhesion even more was actually to remove the blue painter's tape and smear glue stick on the heated bed instead. While it does work, I have no idea why. In the end, I definitely don't regret getting this printer, though it has been a huge sinkhole of time to get everything running as it should. Now when it's producing parts as it should, I feel somewhat vindicated, even though I will be getting rid of the printer in just a month or two as I can't really bring it with me when moving. The next step, if I have time and need, will be to hook up a relay and another power supply to power the heated bed separately, to be able to get it up to high enough temperatures to successfully print ABS. Even though Velomen has some recommended settings for printing ABS, the heated bed currently takes forever to get to those temperatures, and the actual recommended temperatures for printing ABS are still quite a bit higher than what the bed even can produce currently. Either way, if you're thinking about getting the K8200 printer, I would definitely recommend it. If you're comfortable with building and soldering, this is an easy and cheap, if time consuming, way to come away with a decent 3D printer. There are better 3D printers out on the market, but prices are at the magnitude of 3 to 4 times as expensive. Hope you had as good of a time watching me go through this process as I had building and printing. Don't forget though, even when you get it printing as it should, you'll still end up with many many failed prints. That's just the nature of the beast. Thank you, and stay tuned for more material from Switch and Lever.